hey guys, that's Later Magic here, and whoo, we're playing with fire with this one, but if you think I'm not going to cover this story, let me just say, okay, YouTube's rules here, I'm not going to tell people how to do this, also this was already patched. Now that said, I'm going to tell you how it happened, because that's pretty interesting, and because I'm originally a C++, C Sharp, and .NET programmer. Uh, VB.NET, I should say. But that was a million years ago, and I've since moved on. So let's talk about, well, some guy named Dan that managed to get, I believe it was 20 million packs on Arena for free, because Watsy's code is very questionable. And, uh, well, speaking of that, let's talk about the Unity engine-based, C-sharp-based, and completely not-based Arena. So some guy named Dan uh, missed my Pinkerton videos, and then decompiled Arena, I assume in that order, because it's built on C-sharp and a chimpanzee could decompile that. What does that mean? Uh, turn it back into code that you can edit from an executable, basically. You go from machine language back to like something a programmer can understand. So I'm not gonna give the name of the variables or the memory locations, but he discovered that somewhere in the code, when you make a purchase of any kind on the Arena store, it takes the quantity of the item you ordered locally, and then it takes the price and it multiplies it locally in the client. The whole point of Arena security is like all of the important stuff about the game and the purchases and all that stuff is done on a server. And then your client just spits out what's happening because then it's effectively like read only to the extent that it can be. So very, very high on the list of things that you wouldn't want calculated locally. It's the price times the quantity, then uploading the resulting number to the AWS cloud for the purchase. And you want it that way because if the server says, hey, he hit this guy for six damage, and then it just sends that determination by the server to th the two players, then we're all in agreement. If you start taking my client's word for it about what's going on in the game, um, that wouldn't work. Within about five seconds, somebody would have hacked their client to say, I am literally Mark Rosewater and I'm summoning Exodia. And also, I just hit them direct to their life total for a billion life. Never trust the local client unless you absolutely have to. Everything should be on the server side because then that is the absolute authority and you have full control of the code there. But it's fine, guys. They put on validation. You get a message back that says, um, failed to purchase listing because currency quantity is not equal to calculated price. So your client makes a calculation, the server makes a calculation, and if those two numbers don't match, then it doesn't make the purchase. That is terrible security. Let me quote Dan. Well, this left me stumped as to why the client side calculation even exists. So naturally he tried feeding in negative numbers because you know, yes, the old depths of Dejanel exploit, absolutely famous. I am literally the only one who calls it that. I don't care. It was hilarious. And I was like 10 years old and I used it. Create a character, create a second character, Trade character two, negative one million gold. Player one receives positive one million gold. Delete player two. This is why programmers have bumper stickers that say sanitize your input. Validate the values that people are putting in. Or as Dan quotes Brennan Keller in his article, a quality assurance engineer walks into a bar. He orders a beer. Then he orders zero beers. Then he orders 9.9 .9 million beers. Then he orders a lizard. Then he orders negative one beers. Then he orders a... The first real customer walks in and asks where the bathroom is. The bar bursts into flames, killing everyone. Assume your end user is either malicious or a complete moron and is going to do crazy crap like rig their client to put in a negative number. I want to buy negative one packs for negative 200 gold or whatever. Well, that didn't work. But he did find something that did, and it's very interesting because it's not exactly a new exploit. So at this point in the video, if you're like, hey, Des, this is the geekiest video you've ever done by far. And for a bit, I thought I was watching a Mudahar video. You know what you should do is uh, analyze different casino games and then find ways to play them in ways that you always win and then make $50,000 doing it and then make a video on your third channel showing people how to do it and then leave a link in the description. Now, obviously, I would never do that. You can even check the description for yourself to make sure that there's not a link to said video. So he made the assumption, which I guess even he agrees is, it, it, uh, assumption might be a little generous, that the code on the server end is also written in C-sharp. I don't know why it would be, but then also why would you use a different language? But then again, I do have answers to that question, but let's not get into that. So C and C++ are awful, C-sharp's a lot newer, but um, it's still a bit of an antique. 
But in basically any language, which is why it almost doesn't even matter if it matches, a 32-bit integer can only hold 32 bits of information. That's why it's called a 32-bit integer. So no matter what he could send to the server, if it didn't match up to reality, the purchase wouldn't be made. So it's like, oh, okay, it's janky security, but whatever. But what if you fed in, because it is an integer, a number higher than the maximum value that can be uh, held in an integer? And the answer is still an invalid result because it still has to multiply it, but it doesn't validate whether the amount of data is correct. So he basically sent it a 33-bit integer. Now, I know what you're thinking. How did that not crash the exe file? And how did a 33-bit integer survive the entire network stack and transmit to the server? I only have answers to one of those, but it doesn't matter because this isn't an IT video. And, um, well, geez, guys, overflowing a 32-bit integer in Arena? Who would ever do that? I mean, you wouldn't catch me, like on January 2nd, 2019, for example, uh, uploading a video that says what happens when you exceed 2.147 billion life in MTG Arena in a video that gets 200,000 views. I would never do that. And anybody uploading a clip about that is just lying, obviously. It did it! It's a It rolled over the memory location! <gasps> so that should have rolled the calculation, reassessed it. What the what hell? What the hell? <laughs> Negative, wait, negative 893 million life, and I haven't lost the game. Suck it. I'm just going to, like, flip it eight more times and see if I can just blow this game straight to hell. Let's see. If I flip it again, it goes to... What? I'm on the phone with Mark Rosewater, and he's telling me right now that if I keep doing it, it'll actually just show me tomorrow's Powerball numbers, so I'm going to keep going. He's... So without going full mathematics here, um, there was a number that you could feed in that would multiply by a 33-bit integer that would roll over to a certain other value that would result in a valid number being given. I'm not going to give you that number, even though they already patched it. So then he couldn't fake the request uh, to the server because of like some kind of thing that I'm not familiar with. So he just like patched slash edited the exe file itself look there's reasons in games to run obfuscated code and there's reasons not to i'm not saying whoa what a bunch of morons using unity and c sharp nah it probably was the best thing but you, you got to be careful of people running hacked clients and there really should be some kind of i wouldn't even say like drm or anti-cheat or something but kind of that validates the exe when there's you know this kind of money on the line and people are cheating left and right on arena various different ways mostly just by careless programming not by hacking they're not even programming just game design on purpose like the go first system it's crap they even had a glitch where cards already pulled were, were counted as in the deck for the shuffler threw it off by four percent that was verified somebody ran 10 million games and, and verified it and then they very quietly patched it and never admitted it was a problem but now that people know you can decompile it and screw with the code, uh, I think there's going to be more than a couple weaknesses here. I think this is the tip of the iceberg, which is why I'm giving absolutely zero advice or code or memory locations or variable names or anything recovered or mentioned in this article because I don't want to assist in that. That is not how security researchers do things. As much as I hate Watsy, I'm not going to break the law or encourage or help anybody else to. At this point, Watsy doesn't need any help going bankrupt. And I like being not in jail. And plus, in, in like a week, it's planting season in Wisconsin, and I don't want to clean up a bunch of Pinkerton blood off my front lawn. It's a joke, people. So anyway, Mr. Dan here ended up uh, buying like 10,000 packs, unlocking every card that exists, you know, with an auto clicker and just all this dumb proof of concept stuff. And then before disclosing it to anybody, he reported it to the company so they could fix it. There we go. Except that's a load of crap. They sold the control of the code to a Canadian company that's actually uh, partially owned by a Chinese company. So that's two layers of borderline communist hellholes that are now in charge of the code that's written like crap. Now I'm actually happy we can decompile it because now people can check what kind of weird crap is in there. So if you're about to say, oh, let's check if the client cheats you. Um, no, that's server side. But it's going to be real interesting over the next couple weeks uh, what people who are as interested as this guy find in the code now that they know they can decompile it. But they should have known that the whole time the game's been out for like six, seven years. So I don't know.
maybe just nobody wants to mess with the purchasing system because they're not careless and they know what Watsy will do to them. So, uh, yeah, good job, Dan, for pointing it out. Good guy, Dan, for, uh, you know, letting them patch it first and then talking about it. But this is very concerning. So if you're about to ask me the, you know, million dollar question here, is Arena safe to run? I don't really have an answer for that other than don't give it admin access. Oh, wait, you have to give it admin access to patch. And uh, the other answer is um, not as safe as it was before. But hey, all the code, all the actions, there's no peer-to-peer -peer nothing. It's all hosted servers, dedicated servers. There's no peer-to-peer -peer anything. The closest they got was people spamming actions to crash people's clients, which is also no longer a security problem in the game. But people did use it to win tournaments. Then we had the oops, we programmed the card wrong glitch with Ninja's Kunai or whatever it was. And it's just thing after thing after thing after they replaced the original crew, were trying to hire programmers, were shorthanded for years, and then just gave control of the whole thing to a completely different company. As far as I know, because they've never acknowledged this publicly, there's still an issue with draft packs being predictable. So if you're running a draft, I believe only against the computer, you can predict what is in the next pack. Because they thought, oh, we should put in randomization code. Wait, wait, let's not do that. You almost have to try. What are you using, templates? Some parts of the game are brilliant. Some parts of the game were written by absolute morons. And you gotta wonder what they were doing. And you guys, you've seen my live streams, okay? That's all I'm gonna say. You've seen my live streams. You've seen people pull some real suspicious crap. There's actually one out here that I'm, I'm not gonna talk about at all. This broke at the same time. We've all seen me get disconnected uh, in a very high-ranking tournament at a very suspicious time, and I may or may not have done some little modifications to my computer to mitigate that problem. And then I reconnect, and oh, they time me out or forfeit. Huh. Isn't that weird? There's actually, okay, there's one I'm, I'm not going to talk about because I don't think this has been resolved yet, but I have been presented with. Um, proof might be a little strong, but very strong evidence that there is a disconnection hack. There, there's a way to disconnect your opponents that is still active in Arena. I'm still looking into it, but that I basically can't make a video about. I think I'm already playing with fire with this one. But I wouldn't enter any tournaments or paid drafts right now. Let's just put it that way. So yeah, the, the coding, bad, 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 bad. One more reason to stop using Arena, in my opinion. I guess one thing is after I ran a thousand games and found out that I went first, it was either 18 or 21% of the time, but either way, like a one in a hundred trillion chance of that happening naturally if it was actually 50-50, and then other people verifying it over the years because Watsy never listens to me, it looks like just recently, like two weeks ago, they may have finally gotten rid of that rigged go first system. Just in time for them to ruin standard, but that'll be a second video. So, hey, thanks for watching, everybody. Go check out my casino video uh, that doesn't exist, that doesn't have a link down in the description. In completely unrelated news, congratulations to everybody from my Discord channel whose uh, recent trips to the casinos were very lucrative. <laughs> Must be some good luck going around. Boy, don't you wish programmers knew what they were doing? I'll see you guys next video.